I, I like the lactose brings people together. Well, and I now mean, here we are. It's there for that, I isn't mean, it? It's, it's, there's a reason. It's it's the most glorious substance. But we're going to get to that. <laughs> Are you a brewhead? I'm a brewhead. Are you a brewhead? I'm a brewhead. Y'all a brewheads? Yeah, we brewheads. So pour a glass of craft beer. We can do this. Yeah. What's good, y'all? This is Sea Certified Brewhead, and welcome to episode 119 of Beer and Other Shit Podcast. This afternoon, we are in glorious Magog, Quebec, with Uncle David Plass, head of production here at Memphre. Is it La Memphre Microbrasserie? Yeah, it? well, you can say Memphre. I'm not going it? It's Microbrasserie La Memphre. Whatever, I hate that. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Apologies. Good to meet you finally, man. Yeah, nice to meet you too. We've been talking on Facebook about lactose for. Oh, why a couple of months? I it's been, it's been, it feels like longer, but it's probably only been like yeah. since the summer, since the lactose thing that I, I, f- I feel like I've lactose known you <laughs> for years. <laughs> I, I like the lactose brings people together. Well, and I mean, here we are. It's there for that. I Isn't mean, it? It's, it's, there's a reason. It's it's the most glorious substance, but we're going to get to that. <laughs> um, maybe I wouldn't say it like that. Yeah. Okay, no, it's okay. the most glorious. Is it? There you yeah, go. There you go. I'm you know, and this, I just want to start this off that Noah told me, you lion ass Noah, that you are lactose intolerant and your acceptance and joke about lactose is the whole point of your jokes. Yeah. Is that, but that's not true. That's not true. You've been lied to. I'm sorry. <sighs> Noah Forrest. But I, I mean, the people that tell you that, they've been known to lie a lot, so. I'm just saying. Team, those team no lactose people, we don't trust yeah. them. Yeah. Um, so this is this is great, man. It's our first time out here. Uh, this building is gorgeous. We're right on Thanks. the what's the river called? Well, it's the head of the Memphis Mega Lake. Okay, that pours the lake. into the, the the river that becomes the Saint Francois River in the Magog River. Well. Gotcha. Okay, sick. Um, this is a wicked place. It's been snowing here the last couple of days. Yep. Everything is covered in white. It's just so pretty right now. Um, Which is pretty unusual for that time of the year, but we'll isn't take it? it. It's November, like twenty something, like late yeah. November, and like, we don't have for... we don't have that much snow. Do you think that this is that much? But it's good. No, I mean usually it's less snow than that. Oh, yeah. It's crazy. Oh really? But it's good. Yeah. We can go ski or snowboard this is, week. There is mountains like Mount Offord yeah. is close by, right? There's a couple of mountains close by. Offord, Sutton, Alzit, and even Jay Peak in the states is not that far. Of a yeah, drive. that like north of Vermont, right? Yep. What's like an uh, not even an hour drive? No. Yeah. How close are we to the border here? 30 minutes. Okay, it's even closer than us. That's Same convenient. distance as Chabrot. Right. Yeah. Um, so we have 8,000 beers in front of us. And yeah, maybe. You know, I've never tried um, your beer before. I don't understand why it escaped me. So I'm sorry, but now I get to. And a lot of them all at once. <laughs> because we don't really distribute beer, too. You, know? we don't you have that. a couple cans now. Yeah, we have two cans. Those Which is are, one of the Saz Pils. Saz Pils and Double Martin. Those are the two, are the two beers that we regularly put out in the market for people to drink at home. Right. Uh, other than that, like our production is mainly like 90 95% kegs. Right. And... Seventy-five percent of those kegs are sold here at the brew, at the restaurant, right? And the like, the rest of them are sold in beer bars in Montreal, Quebec, Chevrolet, Gatineau, or things like that. Where in Montreal are you? For the, uh, for the folks watching from that, we are often in like Brua, the two Bruas, Ildegal, Yeast. Uh, oh, I have been to Yeast. Okay. I, I'm gonna forget. A lot That's of just them. just curious. So it's like all, all the main beer bars. Yeah, all the, the main beer bars are there. That. We're sometimes with like Arikana too because we have a good relation with Francis and Maria. Francis, we cool, go yeah. B52 with them, which is oh cool. yeah, like yes, <laughs> great beer. So okay, perfect. So we'll start with this one. Now this is yeah. typical blonde ale, super easygoing beer. It's a four percent beer. Like the, the nice goal of that beer for us was to kick the Coors Light out of the bar. You know, so we brewed a really simple. We're not trying so. to make it an yeah. insipid beer. Okay. We're, we're, like it's a, it's so it's considered a blonde, more it's not or a less a four percent sasspils that's been fermented at ale temperatures. So it's right. not a sasspils at so all. It's not a pils, no, it's not no, a lager. No. It's but a it's, one it's specifically almost exactly the same beer, same hops, but it brewed to a four percent version and fermented at higher temperature. Okay. We kind of have the goal at some point to make it regularly as a lager. Okay. But like we don't have the means of production right now to do that because we miss fermenter space. And of like course, that. yeah, the largest of and the. Harvest. My ideal goal would be that that beer is always a lager, but it's not right now. It's mainly a ale because it's faster to brew. Gotcha, makes sense. Yeah. All right, beer photos are starting. It's gonna be a bunch. We can change the faces yeah. up. I, guess I know. It's solid. I have a lot of faces. I'm glad we're gonna need them. We're gonna bring them all <laughs> yeah. up. Woo. We have twelve. <laughs> um, all right, let's start with your beer history, man. Tell yeah. us how did you get into beer. Um, it, it, it's a it's pretty curious. Like when I meet 
friends from like high school, they're they're all surprised that I'm working in beer now because I used to eat beer. Right. I didn't drink beer. I started drinking beer at 22 years old. You know? Right, late, late I, I, I really didn't enjoy it that much. And then at some point, I tasted craft beers, and it's some kind of cliche thing. And I kind of had a revelation, you know. And I tasted one gateway beer, which was the Mac Crock and Flower, brewed by Jean Philippe Barbeau. At the time, it was brewed by Pierre Folly, which is a project that René Rall and as Simple Mal Brasserie right now. Anyway, okay. I drank that beer. A friend of mine suggested it to me. I loved it. I started drinking beers, started really enjoying it. But I never really saw it as a. Uh, Something I could that could be my job, you know. I, I used to be in video. I was in video for like 12 years, almost. And <clears throat> the more the years went by, the more I enjoyed discovering beer, tasting beer, and I'm meeting people in that industry. And just and I, I was always like, no, I'm, I'm I like it, but I like drinking it. I don't want to be brewing it. You right, know? right. And then in 2010, I did a uh, a road trip with my. Uh, Conjoint, the mother uh, of my partner. child, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and, and the mother of my of my kids. We went to uh, Rio Bud Beach in Delaware, where nice. Dog Fish Head is located. Oh, cool! And then we visited their pub. We visited the factory, and then I had a almost eleven hour drive when we came back. And I thought a lot, and I was like, I really love beer, and it's it's starting to obsess me. I should try at least to brew beer. And then I had the chance that a friend of mine had a really great home brewing setup. He, he landed it to me, I tried it, and I just became obsessed with it. Right. And it was like a week before that I didn't brew, and the week after that I just brewed like three times a week. And I went crazy, I spent a lot of money, and I, I really wanted to like do something. And then it, it soon became like obvious that I had a serious interest in the thing. And then I started being at more events and helping brewers like that needed someone at their uh, festival booth or something like right. that. And then the more and more I went to that, uh, the, the less, not necessarily interest in video I had, but the, the more I felt like I wanted that to be everything in my life, not just right. like a hobby I do on the weekends, you know? And then I had the chance to meet Todd in like early 2013. And Todd and is the owner. Todd is one, one of the co owners owner. yeah, that's of uh, Memphis. Sorry. That's all right. And, and I told him like I wanted to come back because I was born in Macaque and I wanted to come back here. It was one of my goals. Where were you? Really? I was in Montreal. I've been in, in Montreal? Montreal for 12 years too. Ah, uh, right. And then. <clears throat> and And he told me that he had a project of like expanding the brewery. There was a brew pub at the time that was in the basement here, and that he needed someone to help him do that. Mm -hmm. So I quit everything. I quit the business I founded with two other guys in video. I convinced the mother of my child mm -hmm. to come back right here, here with me. Is she from here as well? No, she's no. from Rimouski. Okay. And we met in Sherbrooke while we did uh, uh, our college together. Ah, right, right. And then we lived together in Montreal and. Mm -hmm. We we never look back, yeah. and we never regretted it too. It's it's been quite a ride, nice. and we had two other kids, and while well, that was yeah. happening, so we it kept us busy. Wow, I'm sure <laughs> it doesn't end. With the and that, that's about it. Now it's been it's been five years in July this year. Amazing. And I've been working at La Memphre every like day. That was that, every day. Like, yeah, that's it. And you know, you're you're taking a brand back, you're trying to reposition it in the market, you're creating a new brewery entirely that now can sell beer to other places too. So we kind of had to step up our game. We bought an entire new kit and everything. And it's going out pretty well. I mean, I'm I'm super lucky too like the stars were aligned, I right. guess. Timing But we're, we're working hard too. Me and Eric are, are are trying to like always put a beer that's that's up to our standards on the market. Amazing. So you move the production from the basement here to a separate facility yep. at the other end of town. Exactly. Right? Correct, which we'll go visit after. Yep. Um, and your role as head of production, so you're not physically I'm, brewing I'm, that much? I'm not really, not those days. Like, because now we're, we're getting used to like the, the, the new brewing setup and facilities. You know, right. like at the beginning, we had to get used to it. So it took us more time to achieve things that we do right now that we're super used to do it. So Eric really does the the labor-ish, like uh, the concrete work, you know? Yeah, yeah. He's the one that does this. I help sometimes, but like 
it would be lying to say that I'm there often in the production, like yeah. actually brewing. That's not what gotcha. I do. What does like, your role look like? Like what sort of? Well, you know, I make sure that we have good recipes, good beers, that the beer we need to be brewing are brewed, and that uh, the research that we need to be doing to improve the beers we're doing, or for the new beers that are coming out, and that that you know, I just like make sure that the equipment is working, that we have the ingredient to brew what we have to do. I kind of right. supervise the production. And I make a lot of, um, I try and make a lot of bridges with the the restaurant here because it's our biggest client, you know, and to make sure that all the beers that we pour here are exactly like we want them to be. And this is also something I do with all the other places where we sell beer. Right. So you're just like sort of scheduling things in and like coming up with recipes or ideas for the fun stuff? Yeah, 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 exactly. Okay, so let's talk about the actual brewery itself. 20 years ago it started. Yeah, it started 20 years ago. uh, Some guy started that pub in that really well-located house. Oh, yeah. It's it's almost 200 years old. It was like a... uh, it's the second oldest house in Magog. And we're looking at the oldest house. Yes, the oldest the house area. is right across the street. It's the house of the founder, which is named Ralph Mary. It's the name of our anniversary beer that comes out in like two weeks. Nice. It's a Scotch Ale mm-hmm. aging bourbon barrels that we get out every year just before Christmas. Nice. And this was the house of Elvin H. Moore, who married the daughter of Ralph Mary. Smart and man. he was the first mayor, too, of Magog. And uh, that's, that, that's why there's such that old house feeling in it. Lots of wood, lots of old windows yeah. and uh, things like that. You saw the potential for sure of that house in a, in a region that's super like uh, big for its tourism. Like in, in summer here, it, it just explodes. Right, like so lakes. much people. Because of the lakes and stuff like that. The right? lake like and uh, like there's a lot of things to do around here that, right. they, that, that fit well people in vacation. Right, right. And then he bought the house, did that pub. He used to brew by himself and, and was one of the f- first brewery in the region too, you know. You you met Stan then as the oldest it brewery, is. but yes. like still uh, when when it opened in nineteen ninety nine there weren't that much brewery around here. No. But sadly the beers that came out of that project were not that good, yeah. let's put it that way. Things things went on. The brewery didn't really have a good reputation. And then Eric, that's still with us, that brews at the, at the pub right now, that was working in the kitchen, decided to to just take over the, the brewing part because he used to brew at home and he, he had worked with uh, other people in Montreal because he lived in Montreal for a while. He also worked with Grégoire from La Marabois a bit. Okay. And, uh, and he said to the, the old owner, like, just leave me the brewing part, find someone else. Mm. You used to be working in the kitchen. Right. And he said, find someone else for the kicking. I'll take care of the beer. And then he started brewing. And I was probably like, not sure, 2005, 2006, maybe 2007, okay. around that time. And then he was working a really like, obsolete out of date brewing kit but that's what he had so he was doing his best and now right there the beer quality really changed right. but still beer was only served here in, uh, in in the restaurants nobody knew like that it was a, it was a brew pub like even like people from my gog didn't even know we were brewing right and then I came in in 2010 to uh, actually made it a, a an official brewery in terms of bonjour la red ça va bien <laughs> And then, sorry, sorry. No, it's okay. It's <laughs> real life here. Yeah. And then, uh, what I was saying? Oh, yeah. 2013. Mm-hmm. Todd and Jennifer, the owners, had the idea of, like, making an expansion, like, just destroying the brewery that's in the basement, getting the brewery out, making it a, a, a brewery that's uh, able to brew quality beers for the, for the time, you know, in terms of... Uh, uh, how do you say that in English? Like to be like, the co- not like, out of date. The contrary of out of date. Yeah, like pre- like trendy. Yeah, because we 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 were lacking the means of production to do that. It's not only that we were lacking a bit of knowledge and and, and everything, but and we only brew like four or five beers. The rest of the beer what was were like uh, McCausland beers and uh, that's it. So was it this style? Uh, of these like condom, like the the wheat beer, the red ale or the bitter, the IPA, the. So it was five beer because there was a stout and the uh, the scotch. Gotcha. And then the goal was to take back the entire draft lines that we had downstairs that we couldn't be filling with a small kit because it was too like small and everything, and <clears throat> and be able to to brew good beer 
which we, we were not. We were limited by the kit and by the, the, the size of the kit. So it came in, I came in in 2013, and over a period of 18 months, we canceled, like voided. Okay, merci. So we like started looking for a new place, found the warehouse that we're in right now. I'm not sure where else is a good term. Anyway, <laughs> found that, that space and then we bought a new kit. It's uh, five times bigger than what we had before. What's the capacity now? It's a 10 BBL. 10. So, 10 so barrels, we okay. grew like around 1,100 11, 11, liter batches. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, so uh, uh, we did that and in October 2014, the new brewery was functional. That brewery was like The permit was voided. We, we stopped everything here. We transferred on the other side. And we started taking back all the lines one by one. We brewed. We didn't even brew like the palm beer at that time because we, we weren't able, you know. Right. Was, so we, we, we bought etiquette palm beer, you know. Like, I don't know you say that in English. We bought a generic palm yeah. beer and we put our name on it. I'm not so proud of that. Sorry. <laughs> sorry from someone Maybe else I should have it. said that. <laughs> <laughs> This is all your own stuff now, though. Yeah, it's our own stuff, right? Okay, and I was like, yeah, man, no, you're and, in a transition But, I mean, we, we, we didn't have a choice. We, like, yeah. if, if we would, like, if we were to be brewing the bomb beer, Eric would only have brewed that in the old mm. kit. We would have oh, literally no other no beer. For yeah. anything else. That's it. Oh, it's like, it's like contracting? Yeah, some kind of contracting, but e e even worse than that. So let's I not get talk it, about it. 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 And, and, uh, do what you gotta uh, do, bro. Yeah, that's it. And then there was the part of getting used to the kit, brewing the new styles, Adapting the recipes, changing, dropping some styles, and getting new beers in, like the Double Mountain or things right. like that. And now it's been five years. We have two beers in cans. We, the, the, we usually get five beers in bottles out per year. That's our okay. that's approximately what we do, and that's what we have the, the capacity to do because the rest of the time we have to be making kegs. The brewery was made to 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 provide beer for the restaurant here. Okay. And in, in the summertime, 100% of the beer that we produce there is salty. Right. We, we don't. Can't destroy it all. That's it. And it gets down a bit in the winter, like, uh, uh, but even sometimes in the winters, we have big weeks or big weekends. But there's a small part where we have a bit of time, so we plan the bottles that come out, usually just before Christmas. Nice. They're like big beers or big barrel ale beers. I was going to say, what kind of stuff do you do? Beer? It's, like it's big beer barrel ale beer. We... we The goal with our bottle is to get like um, celebra celebratory beer. Oh, you say yeah, that like yes, beers, yeah. festive beer. We're, we're not like there to, Yeah, like that's it. We're not there for like a blonde beer or yeah, a crushable yeah, yeah. any beer or something like no, that. No, no. We're there for like big bold beers. Those are like an effect, you know. Yeah, yeah that's yeah, what totally. we want to do with the bottles. I think that's the that's what bottles are for these days. I like that. Well, and I, I, we, we, we like it for that. I mean, it's good for something else too, but like for us, it serves that great purposes of like creating those events around models. I love it. Dave, you're a legend, mate. Thanks, man. Uh, thank you very much for having us. I really appreciate it. Well, you thanks for man. coming back. Hey, man. It's pleasure. Nice. I'm, I'm glad thanks we are uh, taking the time of listening to me. I enjoy it. You are a very entertaining, uh, well experienced young man. I try to be. And you know your I stuff. I try on it. And you are, are you now officially, let's, let's put this on record, what team are you on? Team Michaels, for sure. Yeah, damn right, you are all day. Uh, yeah, Dave, I mean, where can we find you online? Where can we find Memphrey online? Uh, well, there's a website. Yeah, there's going to be written. Is it going to be written? Oh, yeah. I don't know, oh, because yeah. it's a super long French name. I don't want to be saying it. You can say it. Tiffle, write it down. It's www.microbrasserielamemphrey.com. It's easy. Super it's not that French. Yeah. And, and uh, there's a Facebook page. Yeah, no Instagram, Instagram, nothing like that. Yeah, we also we're also on Instagram. Both the restaurant and the brewery, we have separated accounts oh, because because there's Memphis restaurant. There's the Memphis restaurant. restaurant. There's the Memphis yes. uh, Fabric Abiar, which is the place where we brew the beer. Fab oh, yeah. what's your Instagram? It's What is it? David Plas, D A V I D B L A S S E. I love it. It's perfect, Dave. Yeah. Thanks again, brother. Thanks Appreciate again, your time, guys. If you enjoyed the episode, mate, boom, smash the thumbs up. Hit subscribe below. Hit the notification bell so you know when the new new drops. Follow us on social media at Beer with Podcast. Check out the long form audio so you can hear Team Lactose, attractive people like Uncle Dave right here, talk about amazing things. Um, Spotify, follow us on Spotify, uh, rate, rate, view, oh my gosh, rate, review, subscribe. <laughs> I know, right? I'm, I'm tired. Uh, rate, review, subscribe on Apple Podcasts. That's it, guys. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs>